Hi everybody, my name is Michaela Beyer and today I'm going to be speaking with Rob Gardner. <laughs> Rob Gardner is the original drummer of Guns N' Roses and LA Guns and he's going to tell us all about their early days and what his life and career have been like since then. Thank you so much for coming on, Rob. No worries. Yeah, glad to be here. Good. Alrighty, and also I should add we're at the Rainbow Bar and Grill. Some of you probably recognize it. There we go. <laughs> I can swing around a little and give you guys a bit of a view. Uh, a lot of uh, sorted activities went on here, you know, and some yeah. good ones too. Fried zucchinis to bomb here. Just saying. Yeah. There you go. Alrighty, yeah. cool. So let's start from the very beginning. Where were you born and raised? Let's see. I was born in New York City and um, raised in Westchester County, which is just a little bit upstate, probably about a half hour out of the city, but it's really considered the suburbs. And, okay. Yeah. And was anybody in your family musical? My grandfather on my dad's side was a drummer. Ooh. And then my my aunt on my dad's side um, married a drummer who supposedly played with Tony Bennett. Wow. Yeah, I have drums in my family. <laughs> awesome. Kind of funny, yeah. So you grew up all around that. Do you remember the first time that you actually sat down at a drum kit? Um, I started in a marching band um, in school, so I was learning all drum rudiments and stuff. And mm -hmm. first, I was playing the cymbals, nice. and then, um, and then, yeah, then I got my first drum set, set it up in my basement, and um, my mom had me take lessons. She goes, "If you're going to get a drum set, you're going to take drum lessons." I'm like, "Okay." So I did, and uh, yeah, just practiced every day after school, yeah. Excellent, and did you eventually wind up forming a band? Uh, not in New York, so that didn't really happen till, um, I mean I played with some friends in, in when I was in New York, but I was still only, only about 14 okay. until I moved to LA, I went to high school here in LA. That's right, you went to Fairfax High School. I went to Fairfax. And tell us about who some of your classmates were. <laughs> Well, obviously, I met Tracy, mm -hmm. and then um, we became pretty fast friends over there. And I knew uh, Mike Jagos. He sang for LA Guns in the beginning. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Right. Thank awesome. you. Do we want some food, or are we just chilling right now? Uh, just chilling right now. Okay, perfect. Right now. Thank Thanks. You. Um, and then I met, uh, well, I met. Slash, and I met Steven over there, mm -hmm. and then I already knew Izzy from yeah. when I first moved to California, to Los Angeles, I had, I had met Izzy because he played in a band for Mike's brother. Yeah. What, what was he like back then? Um, same pretty much. I mean, um, maybe a little, might have just a little bit different and, you know, but yeah, Izzy's always been pretty consistent. Yeah. yeah. Good guy. And what were the others like back then? I mean, was Slash kind of, um, was anybody markedly different or were they basically all like younger versions of their crazy selves? <laughs> exactly. That's that's really, uh, I kind of hit the nail on the head there. Um, we were all, we liked to party. <laughs> we all liked to play. So we were always playing and, and, you know, doing backyard parties and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we all kind of were in each other's circles, more or less, you know. Yep. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I would fill in for this band, you know, it's just kind of funny. Cool. Yeah. And so was it, a, was it a really welcoming environment? I mean, did you feel like that was a good group of people to help your, to be in for your musical talent to flourish? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, J Tracy and I were, um, we teamed up right away. Um, and so he was like, already really good and by the time we were you know 10th grade you know okay. he, he was uh this is when i met him 10th grade mm -hmm. um and yeah no he was he was really good and then uh slash was great too but obviously se separate bands yeah. but there are a lot of talented kids that that um went to that school and musicians have played so yeah it was, it was great good influence for and the golden question about Fairfax, have you been to any of like the anniversaries since then and seen all these people? <laughs> no, um, it's kind of funny, but um, I never really went to a Fairfax high school reunion. Oh, okay. Um, it's just weird how the kids from that school, they all still keep in touch. Okay. So it's like always a reunion. 
you all know, right. all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there's not much of a point. Yeah. I just I wasn't really like big on 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 uh, on school. I I uh, kind of. Um, I mean, I went. I cut, but you know, <laughs> you know but I I did go and whatever. But I just wasn't really my thing. I liked things on the that were connected with it on the outside of the actual school. So. Fair yeah, enough. Slash yeah. and Steven didn't graduate either, so. So, yep. you know, a bunch of rebels we are. Yeah, exactly. Still. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of leads me to my next question. Was there a point at which you decided that you were going to pursue music as a career instead of going to college or doing a trade or joining a service? Um, yeah. I mean, that in high school was the, was the time um, where, yeah, there was something I wanted to do. I wanted to be a drummer, so. Um, my dad had. My dad was a photographer, and um, I used to help him out all the time, like on the set. So I was always around, like models and actors and film and lights and cameras, etc. And he asked me if I wanted to work with him, and you know, he would send me to photography school and like that. But I really, the music was my passion, so yeah. I did that. I just told him, I said, "No, I, thank you, but I'm gonna just go ahead and do this." Yeah. It sounds like even though you did, even though you decided not to go down the photography route, like it, it, you weren't really intimidated by the showbiz scene. Like it was natural to you. Yeah, it was kind of natural. I grew up around it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So describe what it was like um, going into your first band. Um. So, yeah, I just loved playing. I mean, um, we were all on fire and just you know trying to be as good as we could and mm -hmm. learn all the latest licks and you know um, songs and writing stuff like that so yeah um did a lot of you know at that age you're doing like backyard parties and stuff yes and um so a lot of this was like i think you had to be 18 at the time and then by the time we turned 18 it, it moved up to like 21 you know yeah. yeah so we were kind of right in that period where you know i remember we played some clubs where uh like I think the Troubadour, we did a show with the Troubadour, we were, we were like still, I think we were still under 18 or whatever, and they had to put wristbands on us yeah. so that they knew that we weren't old enough to drink. Yeah. Basically, they let us on the stage yeah, to play, right. and then we had to go right back out into oh. the alley, right back out of the club. Okay. Yeah, that's how young we were. Yeah, and and it kind of it kind of brings me to another question: Were there any other bands on the scene that you really felt pumped and inspired by, or that you really liked going to see? <clears throat> For sure. Um, I mean, um, Motley Crue. Me and Tracy <laughs> used to go watch Motley Crue um, at the Whiskey, like down the street here, and, and just sold out shows. They'd have like two sold out shows, and just people with lines around the corner. Yeah. And then while the one show would let out. Um, there would be, you know, the second line. They'd start letting the second line of people in for a second show. It's it was pretty crazy. Wow. And then Wasp, they were just playing a Wasp. Mm -hmm. But um, we used to go watch them at the Troubadour, and um, that was crazy because they had all the pyrotechnics and all the, you know, the light the sign on fire and all the gels on the lights would melt. And yeah, it was very were, theatrical. Like. It was very theatrical. He was throwing stuff into the audience, <laughs> like chunks of meat, and bloody meat. Yeah, it was much like more. That. Yeah, it sounds like it was much more untamed then than it is now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Um, and th it brings me to another question. I don't think we discussed this before, but um, if you'll indulge me, mm. what do you think of some of the recent films and television series that have come out about the Sunset Strip, like The Dirt, which was filmed partly here in the Rainbow, and um, Pam and Tommy, which was also filmed near here? You know, um, I've only seen like bits and pieces of both of those films. I don't know why. I just I just haven't really watched The Dirt. I, you think I would have, but I, I just I haven't watched it yet. So um, I can't really answer that. Um, but from what I did hear is that eh, it kind of, it's hard to really, um, for a film like that to do it justice of yeah. really what it really was like. Mm -hmm. You know? Have you ever been... So it's kind of hard to, uh, hard to judge that. So... I mean, in my opinion, the dirt is way too polished. Like, yeah. it, it should have been a little bit grittier and more dirty, for lack of a better word. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah, and I've talked about that with people. I mean, it's I'll always have a bit of a thing against Motley Crue because I'm a Hanoi Rocks fan. Ah, so. there you go. There we 
go. Yeah. But, oh. um, but at the same time, I like the idea of having more films come out that honor that period. I uh -huh. mean, um, have you ever been approached by anybody who wants to make a movie about Guns N' Roses or L.A. Guns? Or Yeah, you know? I've done a few things. Um, kind of like this, like video interviews and, and um, you know, like that, where they're asking all the questions and, about it. But um, not to actually act in a, a film like that or sure whatever, but just... You know, I've definitely done interviews about it. Um, yeah, kind of, I guess, to, um, to rephrase the question mm. a bit, like, has anybody come to consult you about it or ask you about what that time was like or to kind of have you share the experience of uh, making the film? Yeah, like I said, I mean, um, I've done a lot of interviews where people have asked me, you know, God, what was it like back then? It was such a crazy time and it was a special time on the Sunset Strip, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean... Um, because I know that people have approached um, Axel and Slash about doing movies and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and they've turned them down thus far. So yeah, you know, maybe in the future we'll get like a Guns N' Roses biopic. Yeah, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would um, be cool if they shared it with you as well. Like if they could, you know, have you if they could interview you before they do the script. And I'm, stuff like I'm that. ready and willing. Yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. See, talk to Rob Gardner. Ask me, I was there. <laughs> Alrighty, cool. So tell me, yeah. yeah. So tell me about um, the formation of Guns and Roses and LA Guns. Oh, so um, LA Guns really um, formed in Fairfax High School, um, probably around eleventh grade, twelfth grade, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. and um, and so. Um, it started as a band called Pyrus, mm -hmm. and um, Tracy and I used to just we just jam drums and guitar in, in in my room and or at his dad's you know plumbing shop or whatever we used to go play there. Mm -hmm. And then um, so eventually that just grew into into Elegance. Excellent. And um, we met Raz in in school. He was the manager, kind of promoter manager um, of the band. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's where we really started taking off. It was really, um, you know, we got a lot of merchandising and, and recorded an EP, like a four song EP. Mm -hmm. And then, so at the same time, um, uh, around the same time, I would fill in for, for Hollywood Rose, yes. for, the, for the drummer. Um, um, they would, I would just get a phone call, hey, can you, can you, you know, play drum, we have a show coming up, we need a drummer, or whatever, and I'm like, okay, yeah, so I knew all the songs, mm -hmm. so yeah. that's and how I met you know, everyone, you know, Chris Weber, and yeah. Steve Darrow, and, and yeah. And I, so. I mean, I'm a little bit curious what, what it was like listening to Axel sing at that time when he was young, and his voice was kind of at, I shouldn't say the peak of his power, but um, like, what did, what did you think of him? Definitely okay. unique. I mean, uh, kind of well, thumbprint. So um, he had he had his thing going on. This is the way he dressed and the way he um, uh, his front man, you know, style that he had was really unique. And so yeah, kind of knew we had something going on there. Yeah. yeah. But his voice was like, I was like, wow, it's just so different, you know. Yeah. Um, and so much range too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know there are people who um, would listen to Appetite for Destruction and they would think it was actually two singers because, you know, there are songs where he sings very low and sings very high and yeah. people couldn't tell it was the same person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was good. Excellent. And um, do you have any, like, memories that stand out of that time or gigs that you were part of that um, hold a special place in your heart? Um, well, whatever shows that we did were stood out. Um, I remember we did um, a show at this place called the Dancing Waters. Uh -huh. It was out in San Pedro. Okay. And that was like that was like right when that first turnaround started coming around, where the Hollywood Rose and the and the LA Guns influences were starting to mix together. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that was cool. Like, I think Axel wore a kilt that night for the first time. Really? I remember that? <laughs> that was cool. And the audience was like definitely responding. Yeah. So yeah, we knew something was was happening there. So we were trying to just branch out of Hollywood and get to the outskirts, you know, and start getting our name around. 
Yeah. A little more. And that kind of brings me to my next question. Um, what ambitions did you have for, I mean, at, at that time, we're still in, in the LA Guns phase. Like, did you want to get a record deal or were you just kind of feeling the waters? Oh, yeah. No. We, we all wanted record deals at that time. Mm -hmm. We were running with the torch. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. So you were genuinely ambitious for the band. Like, Absolutely. And what was the, what was it like laying out a path at that time? I mean, did you have specific goals that you set, or was it just like we're going to play as much as we can, and you know, until someone notices us? That was pretty much it. Okay. Yeah, you just want to get yourself out there as much as you can, and like I said, we were trying to go on the outskirts a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, um, we played uh, another place in um, well, we did the San Pedro show, and then Glendora, mm -hmm. another one. It's all the way out, kind of towards Orange County over there. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, just branching out and getting your name out there and playing as much as possible. And then obviously in Hollywood as well, you know, yeah. Troubadour, Whiskey, you know, Roxy, doing as much as you can. Nice. Now, did you ever play in L.A. Guns when Paul Mars Black was part of it? Nope. No. Okay. Mm -mm. Um, so that, that version was after the original Guns N' Roses mm -hmm. uh, and when Chasey and I departed. Um, he kind of went his way and then I went my way. And um, yeah, so and but so I know I know uh, Paul obviously well, and and, uh, and I knew I knew all the guys and Ellie Guns once Tracy reformed that band. Yeah, I adore Paul by the way. He's a yeah, guy. Oh, yeah, Paul is awesome. Mm -hmm. Hi Paul. Hi Paul. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and um, one thing I'm curious about is, um, do, do you think that you uh, are there any guns or excuse me any songs from Ellie Guns and Guns and Roses where you think you deserve writing credit or that you were part of composing? Well, um, that is an interesting question for a drummer, um, but I believe when um, a band is writing a song, it should be kind of everyone's mm -hmm. part, you know, because the drummer does add, oh, let's try this here, or why don't we, you know, cut the, cut the timing to halftime or something like that at this section, and it's all like an arrangement. Yeah and, ultimate, yeah, and ultimately Steven Adler would get credited on Appetite for Destruction and the songs that appeared on there, so that's Yeah, fun. yeah. So I remember when we were writing um, Think About You, mm -hmm. um, Izzy had come up with that, and um, yeah, he showed us like the main chords, and then we all just put it together, like pretty much right there. And then we did a radio interview that night, which was really interesting. Wow. Yeah. Does that radio interview survive? It is around. I have it on um, on on a CD. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so what we did was um, the rehearsal studio we were at um, had he had recording uh, capabilities of he had a mixing board and the whole thing. So he mic'd and mixed us, and then boom, just put it on cassette that night, and awesome. then took that cassette and went to the radio station and. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Just um, but are there any song, other songs that you can remember from the LA Guns catalog that you had a hand in composing, or? Um, Tracy and I um, definitely um, put together uh, a, a lot of stuff. Um, uh, you know, because we wrote as guitar and drums. It was kind of just this weird thing. Usually, like a bass player and a guitar player will get together, or. You know, but yeah, we wrote as a drummer and a guitar player together, so oh. it was kind of kind of a cool, um, you know. So, but the the songs that were on the EP that I played on mm -hmm. um, didn't really um, make it to when he reformed Ellie Guns. Yeah, I think that that EP got re-released later, mm -hmm. later on, yeah. as like a bonus CD kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So, are, are you and Tracy still friends today? Um, I haven't spoken with Tracy in quite some time. I've been trying to um, get in contact with him, but I know he's a busy guy, and I'm a busy guy, so we've, uh, we'll come across each other's paths sooner or later. Yeah, and they're actually going to play on New Year's Eve over at the um, at the Whiskey. So they they did that last year, I believe. Was they, it last year or the year before? Last year, it I was, was last year. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I probably saw you there, but yeah, I was there. I was at that show. Um, I, and I, he slipped out the front door, <laughs> like I was hoping to go up the backstage and I was going to wave him down and say hi. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. It's, um, I actually only spoke with Tracy like really briefly. I have a little video on Instagram where he goes like that, but 
but anyway, I was going to say, though, and, and we can cut this out if you want, but um, if you wanted to come New Year's Eve, I'm sure he'd love to see you. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know if I'll... Um, but it's kind of early to tell what's going to happen on New Year's Eve right now, but um, yeah. I mean, and just as a fan, like... I'd like to. Yeah, and, you know, just as a fan, like, at events like that, whether it's a concert or anything else... Um, yeah. I feel like fans and admirers really like to see people from the history of the band. Like, it doesn't matter if you're in the current lineup or not. So yeah. I think, I mean, and it leads me into my next question. Like, do you feel like fans of LA Guns and Guns N' Roses have been accepting of you and, you know, that they've enjoyed um, asking you questions and that they accept you as part of uh, the history of those bands? 100%. Okay. thousand percent. I mean, I can't tell you how many, um, you know, friend requests that I get and just people inquiring and, interviews that I've done and little films and videos and podcasts and I mean a lot. Awesome. Yeah. Way more than a handful. Um, yeah, so no, everyone definitely wants to, you know, hear the history and what was it like and, you know, how do you you know, everything about it, so yeah, and it's nice that you do that, particularly because there are certain members in Guns N' Roses who are very press shy and don't really talk about the early mm. days or the current days. Yeah. And um, yeah. I think it, it really means a lot to people to hear from you. So. Yeah, no, I'm a pretty private person myself, um, but on something like this, I think it's um, it's good to uh, to let the history out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why, why hide it? It was there, it happened. You know, let's put, put it out there and tell the real story, you know? Because I've read a lot of things that are not the real story, like, uh, you know, this kind of mixed up versions of this and that, and they're, no, that's not right. No, that didn't happen. You know, things like that. Exactly. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to set the story straight and, you know, yeah, which always willing to do that. Yeah, which brings me to my next question. Um, uh, do you remember when you met Duff McKagan? I do. Um, yeah. So, Oli was, um, he was playing for LA Guns. Mm -hmm. And Axel was singing. And then, um, then, uh, Oli just wasn't really into the whole we were a little more glam at that time mm -hmm. yeah like we wanted some makeup and you know teased her hair and like the whole thing and yeah and uh only just that just really kind of wasn't his thing awesome bass player though man he was just like a rock solid like thumping bass player he was so good and um but i think you know and he was from denmark as well he had a little bit of an accent you know okay. and I'm kind of kind of a lot, but um, I don't know. I it, it just wasn't uh, working out with with him. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so anyway, um, Izzy had said, "Hey, I know this bass player, you know, and he's, he lives up in Seattle. You know, I'm gonna go get him, bring him down here, and and uh, everyone was for it. So I just kind of went with it, and yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he walked into rehearsal and I met him. Yeah." Cool guy. Yeah. And, um, of course, he wrote his book eventually about um, his life with Guns N' Roses. And mm -hmm. um, do you like? Do you have any comments on it? I mean, he kind of, it, it sounds like he facilitated um, you leaving Guns N' Roses and bringing in Steven Adler. But do you want to set, kind of tell your side of the story? And um, yeah. You know, um, again, I, I, I haven't really read his book. I think I read like little bits and pieces of it here and there, um, to be honest. So, um, as far as him facilitating it, um, I wouldn't really know how to comment on that because um, it, it just happened. I don't think anyone really facilitated anything. I think it just it just happened. It just okay. um, wasn't meant to be, and um, and we had our reasons for for uh, for leaving uh, mm -hmm. Tracy and I. In other words. And uh, I think the Hell Tour thing was like the bigger part of it, you know, like the van that we were going to be taking, I, we knew wasn't in very good running condition and that it could very well break down at any given moment. And of course, that's what happened. We all know the story. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, but um, hey, they did it and pressed on and it's awesome. It's, yeah, the rest is history, right? Yeah, it sounds like you have a good attitude about it, like you're yeah. happy for them. And yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't have any hard feelings about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Life goes on and, you know, you win some, you lose some, and 
kind of thing like that. But no, I, I love Guns N' Roses. I mean, they're one of my favorite bands. Aw, nice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, 100%. I like that. So, yeah. Already right, cool. So describe what happened after you left Guns N' Roses. Um, uh, so, as far as what? Like, um, as far as the band goes? Or like, my relationship with the guys? Or musically? What are like? Musically, what did you do? Oh, okay. Um, so, I ended up in, um, some other, uh, L.A., you know, Sunset Strip bands. That's what we call them, you know, fancy yeah. strip bands. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, um, I did a lot of that. I had some production deals and, um, and did pretty well so um but nothing you know everything fizzled out in the end kind of thing like that and yeah and um how was there a point at which you decided that you were gonna move on from music or um, um i still play i still love to play i'm not really doing a band thing um at the time or at the you know at the current time um but um it's always in your heart and you always play and um, you know so yeah I think as far as career wise I guess um, there came a point when I had to make a decision okay yeah I'm gonna you know just um, you know I ended up getting married my, my, my kids and stuff and when That's you have right. a family life it's it's hard to mix that in we all know that mm -hmm. um, um, anyway going back a little bit um, have um, have you maintained a good relationship with uh, the members of Guns N' Roses and LA Guns on the whole? Or yeah, um, so um, I see Slash around town mm -hmm. um, once in a while, and we just usually say hi and talk and um, like that. I went. Uh, I I don't. The other guys are really pretty invisible. Like you don't see them out very much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of, they're a little elusive, mm -hmm. but um, I always got along with with Duff. I mean, great guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone that knows him would say the same. I mean, he's just a great guy. Yeah. Axel, same thing. I uh, I always got along with him, mm -hmm. and yeah, we were always uh, good friends. And and uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out, you know, as far as the band thing goes. But um, that's just uh, the way things roll. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I'd love to see him and say hi. Yeah. yeah. And, and just, and I love the attitude that you have. It sounds like you're genuinely proud of having been part of it, but, but you, but you don't really have any bitterness about the fact that, that it ended. Yeah. Excellent. No, I can't, you know, can't cry over spilt milk as they say, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a generally happy guy and, and yeah, I am proud to be part of uh, the, the history of it all. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And again, are there any particular gigs that you remember really, really loving, or that stand out in your mind? Um, all of them. I mean, some of them were blurs, <laughs> but yeah. I remember um, we did a show, it was LA Guns with Axel singing, mm -hmm. and um, I was living in the valley and I had borrowed a friend of mine's motorcycle because my car was just broke, you know, it's just broken. and. So I remember um, racing over Laurel Canyon back to the valley, yeah. you know, after sound check. I took a shower, got dressed real quick, and <laughs> we were wearing fishnets back then, and like, this hairs up, and makeup, <laughs> and the whole thing, and I'm on this motorcycle <laughs> racing back over here, and I pull up in front of the Jupiter, and they were literally, like, waiting on stage for me. Like, where's the drummer? Where is he? <laughs> and I literally, I put the bike out front, gave it to the valet guy, walked in, walked right up on stage and started the first song. That was memorable. I mean, it was just like, that was, uh, that was a crazy gig. Yeah, a yeah. day on the Sunset Strip. It's, it's just another day, right? <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I didn't, like, crash the bike on the way over, and, you know, resting, you know, not on the curves and all that, but yeah, yeah. I survived. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm kind of curious about um, what you think of your style compared with Steven Adler and Matt Soren, who later uh, became the drummers. Like, you Go ahead. Um, yeah, no, both awesome drummers, mm -hmm. um, different styles, um, for for sure. Um, but but the question was, um, how do I compare my style to, to yeah. theirs? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Stephen and I, you know, especially for a band like like Guns N' Roses, mm -hmm. um, you it's very 
straight ahead and and um, so I think Stephen did a great job on the record I mean um, we've talked about it and stuff and he's, he's a great uh, great drummer just fit right in you know for what they were doing and and um, my style compared to his I mean I don't I I uh, like to think we're both uh, good drummers who fit right you know fit right in that there was no uh, issues playing wise you know when I was with uh, with the band um, that was uh, so and then as far as Matt goes I mean I think uh, Guns N' Roses had by the time Matt came around I think Guns N' Roses had evolved into um, not a different band but just matured yeah. you know with, with uh, different sty um, um, styles I should say and mm -hmm. and uh, Again, Matt, awesome drummer. One of my favorite drummers. Really? Yeah, just so really right on, and I love this his his, his fills and and his tastefulness and his playing mm -hmm. and his style. Yeah, I really yeah. like his work in the Colts as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I know he's had a great drum sound too. Yeah, so. Yeah, and I, I'm kind of curious um, who some of your favorite drummers were when you were growing up. I mean, of course, you came from a family that had drummers, but um, like, were you a fan of John Bonham? Or well, he hit the nail on the head. Um, John Bonham was like pretty much my biggest influence. Uh -huh. Ask Tracy, like, <laughs> like we were huge <laughs> Zeppelin fans, mm -hmm. and um, so he was definitely one of my my bigger influences. And then, I mean, at the time, this was this was kind of way back, you know, not trying to age myself, but Keith Moon, of course. he was Keith like, Moon. you know, um, Mitch Mitchell mm -hmm. from Jimi Hendrix, yep. Ginger Baker from Cream, Yes. yeah, those were my influence, many others, but I'm just saying at that, at that time, like coming up, learning different, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And um, I'm kind of curious, like, what you think of how Guns N' Roses has been perceived, perceived historically, because of course after um, the Sunset Strip era happened, grunge came, yeah. and there was a bit of a backlash against that, that type of music, and against Guns N' Roses specifically, you know, there was a, kind of a silly feud between Guns and Nirvana, but now that a little bit of time has passed, I feel like people have grown to have a greater appreciation of Guns, particularly after the reunion of Axis Slash and Duff. Yeah. Um, how, how have you viewed that? Um, well, I would uh, face the facts on that one, and Guns N' Roses was around first. Mm -hmm. And um, by the time the grunge thing came in, um, the Seattle sound, I should say, um, was was really coming around with Soundgarden, even in the early 80s, you know? Yeah, like late 70s, early 80s, like Seattle sound was obviously really coming in. Yeah. Um, and um, I love that whole Seattle sound thing. So I love the grunge thing. So, um, but, you know, two different genres, I guess, really. I mean, Guns N' Roses was Guns N' Roses, and Nirvana's Nirvana. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and they're both just kick ass bands. I mean, right? You can't yeah. deny that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, you know, it's Barbara Streisand and Tony Bennett. I mean, like, what? <laughs> you know, it's just, you just have to like what you like and, and uh, you know I, I like one of the questions people ask me like, well who's your favorite drummer ever or <laughs> you know and I've that is such a hard question because I have so many favorite drummers there's not one particular drummer that is just my favorite drummer ever I think it's hard for me to say that I can't, yeah, yeah you like different things for different reasons yeah. Um, yeah, and I understand that I mean and as far as guns versus Nirvana it's apples and oranges but at the end it's both fruit <laughs> yeah so yeah for sure yeah so, yeah. All right, and describe what it's like um, drumming now. I mean, do you do it on your own, or do you jam with friends? Like, I know you said you haven't really been in a band situation lately, but... Both. Um, um, all the above, kind of. I do um, recordings. Sometimes people ask me to record some stuff, and then um, I do... Um, uh, I get asked to play, you know, sit in, and then, yes, I play... Um, I have a... a I still like to practice and yeah, work on my my chops and stuff. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. And um, are you one of those people who like um, you're like do you feel so so drawn to music that whenever it's playing, you think to yourself, okay, how did he do that? Or yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, um, I'm always, as a drummer, you're always listening to other drummers, like anytime you hear stuff, you know, so, oh yeah, that was a cool feel, how do you do that, you know? Yeah. And then these days with social media, you could just look up on YouTube, okay, you know, exactly. how is this bill done, and who, and who did it, and how do you do it, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like the, um, you know, you were playing music at a time when the internet wasn't around, and we didn't have Facebook or anything like that, and... Um, <laughs> it's okay. Oh, it's, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, anyway, but here's the thing. Do you feel like um, the internet and social media have kind of helped uh, the music you were part of to live on? Like people have access to it more and, you know, they can share pictures, they can share videos, they can yeah. share... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's cool that um, you can open your computer or look on your phone and bring up stuff all the time, like, you know. So, yeah, it's great to be able to look up stuff and yeah. information highway. It's awesome. And so, how did you see your how do you see your legacy with the band? Like, what do you think you contributed to it that made it better? For Guns N' Roses? Yeah. Um, I think just, um, yeah, again, that was a, a mash between L.A. Guns and Hollywood Rose. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, so the mi the mix of the two, it just happened to be like just a, just a cool fit, and um, yeah, I'd like to think I helped develop that that style and the sound um, for what they, what they became. Excellent. Yeah. And so um, recently you got married, and I did. Uh, yeah, and your wife actually wanted me to wanted me to ask the question: um, <laughs> Are you married and in love? <laughs> <laughs> married and in love. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a great gal. Yeah, she yeah. seems really sweet. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. So, um, what uh, what did you think when you heard that Axel Slash and Duff were getting back together? Um, that rumor was circulating for quite some time, mm -hmm. and then it finally actually happened. So I was like, "Wow, they're really going to do this? So, it's cool." Um, I thought it was great. Yeah. And were you one of those people who thought it would never happen and that there was no chance of it, or was there always something in your mind that went? I, I knew one day it would probably happen. Yeah. I was kind of hoping it would, and, and it did, so, um, yeah, it, it did. They're, they're doing great. And I think they're, you know, putting out some recordings now, and yeah. yeah. And um, I know this is kind of a, a, kind of an odd question and a little out of the field, but um, would you like to see Steven and Izzy rejoin them at some point? Definitely. That would be cool. Yeah. I think they've kind of, you know, obviously, uh, you know, got the band together and gone on tour for years now. And, and yeah. uh, so I don't think that's really going to happen, but um, um, it would be cool if it did. Yeah, it sounds like you're very naturally creative. Yeah. Yeah, I think I came from a pretty creative background. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Already cool. So okay. anything else you wanted to add? No, I just, uh, I'm glad to, you know, put my, my thoughts out there and, and answer any questions. And yeah. Excellent. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Rob. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Alrighty, Thanks. everybody. That was Rob Gardner.